What I have here is a limb from a black walnut tree. I'm gonna try and make a spoon out of it. Look like a spoon? Actually, this part kind of does. And I can tell by the by the way the grain on the bark goes that the grain in the wood is gonna be fairly straight as opposed to twisting. This is what we're hoping for anyway. So I'm gonna basically waste away some of this material and get down below this. You can see the wood kind of, this is all rough, a lot of old limb activity here. These are called cat faces and it just shows that there's a lot of limb activity when it was younger and it probably would be junk to try to work with. But from here down, it's very clean to about here. So I'm gonna cut it below this notch, this crotch here and and see what we can come up with anyway. It's black walnut, but it doesn't have much color to it. This will darken up when I oil it after it's done. I bet we can find a spoon in there somewhere. You can see there's a pretty good sized pith in the walnut. So I'm going to put my fro blade right on that and try and split it off this way. This is a piece of hornbeam. It's probably the biggest piece of hornbeam on my whole property. During the last storm, we had lots of wind and it was dead and blew over, but it's like, <laughs> might not mean much to you, but that's a heck of a, heck of a hornbeam. Anyway. <laughs> Crack looks like it's going nice and straight. And open. Got a knot in here, but I don't think it'll amount to much. All the color, your typical walnut color, is right down the middle, about the size of a quarter. So I'm just gonna kinda show you the definition. That's gonna be pretty much my cut line, so I don't have to like draw on there, but I'll have a rule here for the spoon part, just to remind me. I'm gonna pull out of there. I'm gonna cut that first. knot doesn't go all the way through, so as I'm carving out the bowl of the spoon, that will disappear, and that's good. So. Ordinarily, doing a, a spoon, I'd carve it with gouges and knives and things like that, but I have recently purchased some new burrs. They're called Cutsall. I'm going to try them out on this. One reason being is that this piece of walnut is hard and dry. And generally, when I carve a spoon out, I like to use green wood because it carves easier. <laughs> I'll be doing most of it with power tools and then finishing up with hand tools and change out the bit. You start off with the round ball. This is a pretty little piece of walnut. Generally in older trees, you find right at the border between the sapwood and the core, sometimes if you're lucky, you get a little streak of what they call purple and blue and, and things like that. And this is just a little limb, but got a bit of that bluish color coming in. Gonna be a pretty little thing. We always get such great feedback from people. It's always great to hear comments. I love trying to answer questions, if you have any. I'm going to scoop it with a gouge or a carving hook to smooth it up, because you don't want it all rough like that. Smooth like this. Really, I probably won't... If I put sandpaper to this, it probably won't be much more than 320, because you really can't get much smoother than a nice sharp knife cut. And I like the, the tool marks left on it anyway. Shows that it was, you know, carved and it's a little bit more of an organic aura to it. Got a 
you know about this bit for me. I would ordinarily be doing this by hand. It's quite doable and quite satisfying doing it that way, but it's a lot of work. It's hard. I'm I've, now I've got arthritis in my thumbs, and that makes kind of a pain to do that kind of work. This, you know, half the problem or half the trick to doing it by hand is stabilizing your piece so you can use both hands to carefully carve with, right? Almost impossible to clamp these things down. I mean, you can put the the, the neck of it here in a clamp, I suppose, but with a power tool, taking away all the dumb wood that would you be struggling with so much, and I can just hold it with one hand, and it's great. I like it. <laughs> Okay, here's three culprits that would help me tackle the inside of that bowl. This is a bent gouge, and it is a number eight sweep this way. And that's very handy for shallow bowls. This is a spoon gouge, and it's also an eight. What's the sweep? And this is a rather large one, but I have a fairly large cavity to hollow out, so that would be good. And I also have a little thing. They, they make and sell, they whoever they are, but I made this one, and... It's handy because I made it double-edged, so I can go this way or that way without putting it one down, picking up another. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with it. It's tricky business. Let's see, this does a really nice job. These hooks are very versatile because you can utilize the full sweep like a gouge, but if you draw it towards you like that, you can make a very fine line, almost like a parting tool. I may not use those other two because this one's working so well. I suppose I could show them. The gouge, I, I find using the, the back here as a slide helps to make a nice smooth cut. And kind of gauges your angle a little bit too. All right, so that works okay. Try this one. Similar action works okay. It worked better if I had the, the spoon clamped down and I had both hands on the chisel. But really, this would be my weapon of choice. Now this bowl goes down to a certain point here. The grain slopes this way, or it doesn't slope, but the slope goes that way to here, and then you have to come from this direction to there to avoid digging underneath the grain, causing a splinter or a chip. Cutting across grain like I'm doing mostly here is how you get the best control out of your cutting tool. But if you really want to do it and get the smoothest cut, you angle your blade as you're going across and it's like a skew, it, it slices more. And that's when you want to do it, you know, proper way against the grain there. Teeny tiny number 11. I guess it's not teeny tiny, it's just tiny. But a number 11 gouge has such a deep sweep to it. And it's very versatile. You don't run the risk of getting your corners caught underneath the grain too bad. You can actually use the sides of these chisels, gouges. Well, a shallower sweep like this, this would practically be a number three sweep on the side here. So you can like do just use the side or you can use the very uh, belly of it. And I'm going to use it for its depth here and its narrowness and carving out this little channel. I want it to come right up to almost point. I want it like the, the bowl of the spoon is actually folding in to the center here forming the handle, so it's perfect for that. You see the pith here actually runs just under the surface all the way up. I don't think I'll expose it all the way up. But I'd like to get it out of the bowl. these little hooks in almost any shape you want. They're not too hard to make. So this is a really tiny little, uh, let's see, where's the camera cover? Camera, camera, camera. There it is. That's a tiny little thing. And it's made out of a chainsaw file. 
can see the thing is I want to carve out, smooth out this area, but I have to go with the grain. So that's coming out of the cave. Conventional gouges don't really work very well for that. But this is a great little uh, hook for doing this sort of thing. And hollow out the, the sides here a bit. And that's pretty good. So to complete the effect, I'm going to roll this corner over with a straight blade. Another hook. This one here, I only sharpened it on one side, but I brought this side up so far that I can actually use it both ways. It makes it pretty versatile. from here. Okay, we're gonna try a, a new bit. It still cuts all. New shape. My first go at it. Let's see what happens. I've got a little something roughed out here. Kind of a fun thing. What's a porridge spoon without a bear involved, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get roughed up pretty well enough with the power tool, which did very well. I might go back to it, but I think I grabbed the wrong tool. I'm just going to start whittling him down. It's hard to have a piece like this clamped down when you're carving like this because you've got to go at so many different angles, follow the grain. If you contortion us, get it done. Much easier to turn the spoon. This is a, a leather strop with a polishing compound on it. It will refresh a blade three or four times before you actually have to go back and uh, redress it with a stone. actually carve a bark pattern into the handle part here. And I'm gonna use this little number 11. Now, this is a teeny tiny number, not just teeny, teeny tiny. Just gonna kind of make little suggestions of bark. Gotta remember this is wall art. I mean, not wall art, this is a spoon. <laughs> I've got all the bark carved in that I want to. Reminding it's a spoon, it's a spoon, it's a spoon. The last thing I'm going to do is put some little eyes in, and I've taken, well, in this case, a piece of chainsaw file and ground it down and then put a dimple in the very end, and that's my little eye maker. They come out all so cute. Pretty good. I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> You'll have to get up close to it. Remember, just enter to win by commenting on this video doesn't hurt to hit like and subscribe <laughs> putting a wee bit of a dimple in for his nostrils yeah yeah that's a ticket and there he is she he bear I'm going to go over it with a little bit of 320 sandpaper just to soften it up a bit. I don't want to take much of anything off. Just want to take the whiskers off, polish it up a bit. For a finish on this, I'm going to use a little bit of mineral oil because it doesn't go bad, doesn't ran go rancid on you. 
like a lot of vegetable oils and things like that. And want that involved in food. So mineral oil is good. Generally, the spoons and, and wooden utensils that I have, the ones that we use all the time, they don't get oiled and oiled and oiled. They get oiled when they're new and then they get used and they get washed and they get put away and they get used and washed and put away. They pick up oils from what you're cooking and different things, but it's all a constant flow. So, it's, you know, everything's fresh and good. If you put a finish on, it's supposed to make the piece look shiny and new forever. It'll disappoint you. It's better to let the wood just be the wood. So that's why we're using a light coat of mineral oil. 